Hey guys, Andy and Sandra back again with another Big Brew Review. Today we're at Water's End in Lake Ridge, Virginia. Water's End is a young and smaller brewery in our area featuring a four barrel brew house. They opened in 2017 near the Occoquan River and since have been a staple in the beer scene south of DC. Their logo depicts half water and half hop, a nod to the thought that the brewery is where the water ends and where the beer begins. Water's End prides itself in using the freshest ingredients for its brews, sourcing hops from Hop Havoc, a local distributor in the area. Shout out to Pam, thanks for the tasty ingredients. The brewery is expansive for its size, able to seat, well, a bunch of people. I'm not really sure how many, but just look at how many people fit in there. You can totally bring your baseball team in for a victory round or host your next bachelorette party here. No problems. Outside seating is available for those who want to enjoy some warmer weather days, and food trucks frequent the property on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Snacks are also available on site, as well as to-go crawlers, whatever you'd like. Outside food, children, and doggos are also welcome to the brewery. All right, so the first beer we're going to drink is called the Hop Drop, and it's a white IPA, and it comes in at 5.5%. I'm excited. So this is actually one of the original beers that they uh, created when the brewery first opened. Uh, I don't know, two, year, two years ago? Two and a half years two and ago, half? yeah. So, yeah, this is stuck around. Let's smell it. it. Smells great. I can tell there's citra in here. Oh, yeah. Really good presence on that hop note. A little bit grainy. Smells good. Yeah. Go for it. This is going to hit the spot. That was a big one. Mm, it was. So it's got this really kind of bitey, citrusy character to it. The malt is like really balanced, though, in the background. It's, it's more bitter than I assumed it would be, but it, it sits in the background. Yeah. It's not. It doesn't linger on your on your palate no, it at all. Definitely doesn't linger on your palate. It just kind of disappears. With the citra, it kind of resembles a West Coast IPA a little bit. Yeah, it does. It really disappears quickly, and that's I really yeah. like that. It, it lends itself it well to finish. yeah, it lends, lends itself well to a, a really easy drinking beer or something you can just down. That's a good IPA. What are you gonna go with on that? Um, I think I'm gonna give it a four. I, I'm gonna give it a four. Yeah, I'm definitely giving it. Well-rounded beer. Yeah. I like it. And that's a white IPA, so it's brewed with wheat. Yes. So the next beer we have is an Irish Red Ale. Uh, this is on nitro. It's 5.5%. What's it smell like? Mm. A little bit of malt, but mostly like grain. Yeah. I definitely get that malt. It definitely has that, uh, that coppery sort of twinge to it. Very, very smooth because of the nitro. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I really like this. It is easily crushable. Oh my gosh. It's like it has all the creaminess out of a nitro beer. It's obviously on nitro, but it's like well balanced. It has it has some body. Maybe a little bit too smooth. Maybe a little bit more bitterness would have helped. A, a little bit, yeah. Just a tiny bit more. It is though. a little sweet. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more bitterness in there for sure. But overall, really, really good. This kind of reminds me of like Boddington, so a lot of those pub ales in England. Like yeah, Boddington. no, yeah, that's exactly what it reminds me yeah. of, is Boddington's. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's, it's a, like a super, like, kind of smooth, creamy, crushable pub ales, and that's the whole purpose of them. Yeah. Um, but this definitely resembles them. Yeah, I, it's been a while since we've had a Boddington's, actually, or a Tetley's, for that matter. Some that was, beers. those are some of the beers that we actually had, like, the first beers that we drank were were kind of, like the first uh, total wine beers that we bought or whatever were Tetley's and that sort of English kind of ales. Um, we would seek them out too. I remember like, going to the Giant and like trying to find them and sometimes we couldn't find them. We, oh, we gotta go to the, the total wine and get those. So, but yeah, definitely strongly resembles, resembles that. Very nice, where do you think you're gonna go with it? Four. <laughs> you thought about that for a minute. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm going to do a three and a half on it. I'd like to see a little bit more bitterness on it, but it's definitely a better than average beer. I really like drinking that. It's super smooth. I could definitely see drinking this in, in the warmer months too, even though it's kind of like not, I don't know, what I would consider to be a seasonal, like warmer weather beer. Um, it's just so smooth and so drinkable with a low ABV um, that, yeah, I could do it. I think I have just a preference for this kind of um, 
It just reminds me a lot of like the English pub ales. It all like feels pillowy on your tongue. Creamy, soft, light body, mm. not too much bitterness. But it's also does it also doesn't feel heavy like a stout because it's not. But. All right, so next up on our list, we've got the stout. That's what it's called, <laughs> the stout. This is gonna be, I would assume, a chocolatey, malty, stouty beer. It's 6.9%. Yeah, yeah, it definitely smells like chocolatey and roasty malts. It's very, very traditional smelling. Looks delicious. I believe this is on nitro too, it looks like. Yes, it is. Mmm. We do love nitro beer. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me the beer that this reminds you of instantly. Besides the obvious Guinness. <laughs> That's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's got that pillowy kind of softness to it. It's not as bitter as a Guinness. Um, that's the, the thing that I hate about Guinness is that it is, it does leave that like aftertaste, that bitterness in the back of your throat. This just doesn't. I think it has a bit more lighter body. Yeah, definitely lighter. Also a lot higher in the alcohol. A lot higher. Than a Guinness. Good two full percent or something like that, right? Yeah. Guinness is what, like two point, or 4.2 or 4.5 or something yeah. like that? 4.5. I think. Yeah, somewhere around there. It's roasty, it's chocolatey, it's, it's you know, everything you'd, you'd expect out of a stout. It's a better Guinness. It's a local craft beer. It's a local Guinness. I think I'm gonna go with solid four on that one. It's uh, it's highly drinkable. It's definitely got all those chocolatey notes that I really like out of a out of a stout. This is you know accessible to a large degree. Let me give it a three and a half. Hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. So the next beer we have on tap is uh, Belgian Triple. It's called Dillingham Abbey. It's eight percent. Like I said, Belgian Triple. It's uh <laughs> has Belgian yeast and aromas and spices, fruitiness. It's very vague on that on the nose, but there is that sort of fruity kind of mm, mm -hmm. Belgian yeastiness it. to it. Yeah, it's soft, but yeah, it's there. It smells like a traditional Belgian. Oh, okay. Right up front, you get that bite of like that Belgian -y yeast. It's definitely done well. Yeah, no, it's really balanced, but there's that fruit that pops out a little yeah. bit to you. So whatever flavor of dark fruit that is. It does, it kind of has this like um, It has a fruity taste like to it. Like a berry muskiness to it. Yeah. Not musky, but like a berry, berry nose. There's just a lot going on, and sometimes they're delicate, like this one. The fruit notes are hard to pinpoint. I get that Belgian bite more than anything, though. Yeah. It's a little spicy. Belgian beer. <laughs> yeah, it's a Belgian beer. Those are the classic notes that you'll find in a Belgian beer and that's why I generally like Belgian beers. So I'm assuming that you're gonna go mm, four plus on this one? Mm, no, it's a four, it's definitely a four. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll go three and a half. The yeast taste is really good. Uh, it's, it melds well with that dark fruit flavor. I would just like to see a little bit more of that popping out onto my palate okay. is all it is. All right, well that does it for us. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and gently tap that bell button for notifications when new videos come out. Until next time, stay crafty. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I'm cold because I have that shamrock shake. Yeah, what did you eat there? Just the shamrock shake. That's it? Yeah. And How does a shamrock shake fill you up? Because it's a big milkshake. It's a milkshake. I mean, all that ice cream and milk in your stomach. That's your breakfast. Ice cream breakfast. Breakfast of champions. Yeah, best breakfast ever. Breakfast of beer drinkers. I saw it. Oh, it's still not. Mm. Okay. Um, but. <laughs> Who cares at this point? <laughs> I don't know. Do you care? I don't care. No. Nope. Hey guys, back again. What's that noise? Love you. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> All right, so the next beer we have is the Irish Red Ale. It's on, uh, it's not on Nitro. It is. <laughs> it is? Yes. Okay, okay it is on Nitro. <laughs> so, next one is the Dillingham Abbey. Yeah. 
Can you, can you introduce that? Because I can't get the name right. Dillingham? Yeah. You can't say that? No, I always say it's what like you Dillingham. Dill but it's like Dillingham. Because Dillingham. it's a British. Dillingham. Yeah, Dillingham. You just go Dillingham. <laughs> Dillingham Abbey. 8% ABV it. Belgian yes. triple. Is it triple or triple? Triple. Is it triple? Are you sure? No, 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 it's not. It's a Josh, is this pronounced triple or triple? I've heard it both ways, so. I think with the double P, is it triple? Yeah, because there's also the, the T R I P P E L. Yes. Or is that just like a English? Chappelle, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Belgian. Like, is it the right? Yeah. Right. I don't know. Chappelle. Yeah. Chappelle. Yeah. Should we? Google that? <laughs> Should we Google that? Like, like we don't know. We're the experts, and we don't fucking know. Rich and roasty, six point nine percent. Okay, then. That's all we need to know. Turn off that cell phone. Hey guys, back again with another brew review. Today we're at Water's End here in, I don't, where are we? Lake Ridge, Virginia. Lake Ridge, Virginia, okay, take two. Hey guys, Andy and Sandra back again with another big brew review. Today we're at Water's End in Lake Ridge, Virginia. We are gonna go ahead and just kick it. <laughs> 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 so the next beer we have is a Belgian Triple. It's a eight point, Z <laughs> let me try that again. Triple, I'm just gonna call it triple because that's the American you know, way to do it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> We're definitely we out of practice, yeah. I didn't feel like we were out of practice. That just means we're good at our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look like we were out of practice. That's the illusion. Yeah. That's the illusion. We really don't know what the hell we're doing. 